December, we're already in December. Time for a monthly update. Let's have a look back at the month of November. What was going on? A few thanks and updates from the channel. Uh, a little bit about the Super Rugby sides announced for the Aotearoa season here in New Zealand for 2021. A little bit about rugby getting boring, apparently. And a little bit about Scott Robertson with his connection to the British and Irish Lions coming up once again. But let's have a quick look back at November. Pretty eventful month. You'd have to say, in the rugby world, uh, the All Blacks lost to the Pumas. The Pumas beating the All Blacks for the first time in their history. Funnily enough, that was the most viewed content on this channel by a long way. It was a history-making one, and um, yeah, it's kind of not surprising. Uh, in a year which was, which still is, you know, not the best for anybody. People getting sick, people dying. Uh, travel being restricted, the economies in many countries kind of go into crap. It's not been a good year, but that's one of the brighter points of the year, you'd have to say. Not if you're Steve, Steve Foster. Ian Foster and Sam Kane. When am I going to stop with the Steve Foster? But, yeah, I mean, even as an All Blacks fan, man, I, I appreciated that moment for the history-making moment that it was. Um, when I look at the stats of, like, the viewers of the channel by geography, UK is number one. That's quite normal. Uh, Argentina number two that's a first that's a first definitely a first to have the Argentinians being the number two viewers on the channel followed closely by Australia in three New Zealand in four uh, South Africa in five I scrolled all the way to the bottom of the list and I think Hungary had like 170 something views which seems crazy but anyway um, yeah uh, I should say that I also did some videos for Patreon, prediction results, a bit about the jersey collection, which some people have been asking for. Look through some of the jerseys. Uh, that'll be a multi-parter, because there's a few jerseys. Uh, I did a video about um, Sam Kane with the negative fans who don't know their rugby comment, and a little bit about Chasing the Sun, which was... I did another video yesterday about um, Oceans Apart, the Pacific Rugby documentary, and Chasing the Sun was the South African one about the World Cup journey. So, yeah, man, it's been a busy, busy month. But the highlight is definitely the Argentinian win over, over New Zealand. What can I say? Um, yeah, a quick thanks. Uh, I'll start with the Patreon people. These are the guys who support the channel financially every month. If you don't know Patreon, it's essentially like uh, a site where you can sign up to support people. So I've got a page there. I'll put the link in the description if you guys are willing and financially able I would um, love to see some more people jump on there. That'd be that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, these are some of the people who have been doing so. So you get a small level of fame if you sign up. I'll, uh, I'll scroll your name. I do some extra videos, like I mentioned the ones just before, uh, for Patreon as well. I did actually recently get in contact with um, Stats... What's that? Stats Improve? And Opta? Like a stats company. Like proper stats, because... You know, I love my stats, man. I do some stats-based videos. Stats can be misleading, but they can also uh, tell us a lot about the game and who's doing what. Uh, I get my stats from like ESPN, but they've been really cutting back on, back on the stats that they're showing. They don't have any stats for the Premiership this year. They don't seem to have stats for the Top 14. They barely cover, they don't cover the Autumn Nations Cup. ESPN used to have stats for everything. They don't have much anymore. Uh, there's still other sites you can get some decent stats from. But I thought maybe I'd get in contact with one of these professional companies who you have to buy your stats from them. Uh, I put some feelers out to ask them, you know, kind of, what's the deal? Can I, like, get access to your database? I don't need any... I don't need anyone to do any work for me. Like, I'm happy to trawl through the numbers and, and extract my own data, do my own analysis. But that's not, the way that, that's not the way things work with them. To be honest, they're mostly set up for corporate clients like broadcasters newspapers gambling companies like yeah people who are going to use those stats to engage their audience to get tv viewers or to get um you know more people putting money on games and engaging with them and stuff like that so single dude on youtube not really their target market and their minimum price for their product is five grand us so that was a bit scary so at least uh, for all you guys who sign up to Patreon, that's one thing I've got my eyes on. Uh, that's a that's a distance goal, because that's a fair chunk of change. But 
Yeah, that's the kind of thing I've, I've got in mind. I would love to get access to more reliable and more complete stats to be able to get a full look because the stuff that's publicly available, especially with ESPN seemingly dropping a lot of their stat support, it's uh, it's pretty hit and miss. More miss recently than hit. But yeah, as I said, thank you to the Patreon people for your support. Also, um, if people aren't keen on the whole monthly subscription thing, I've got buy me a coffee, I've made it buy me a beer. I'll put a link for that one. That's a more like a one-time donation thing if you don't want to sign up to a site. If you just want to chuck a few bucks, again, I'll, I'll put it to the Opta Fund. I'm pretty happy to do that. So, yeah. Um, aside from that, to all you guys who subscribe, comment, like, view, thank you. That's what makes the channel what it is, man. So, it is a community. And, um, yeah, it's a growing one. We're almost at 30k. So, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, man. Because last count, the subscriber people viewing the videos who have subscribed is like 23 percent so man if you can't afford patreon you can't afford buy me coffee all good keep watching keep liking but subscribe i don't ask for it often but if you could i'd appreciate it now super rugby squads those are out for Aotearoa for for the 2021 season I'm not sure it's managed all that well. Like they made a little bit of a deal about it, about whoa, the Super Rugby sides are going to be announced. It's big news, but honestly, all of the big signings, you know them as soon as the deal is agreed because the teams want to generate interest. So there's no like big reveals at the actual Super Rugby squad announcement days. Not really. The most of the new names are young guys coming through the academy, maybe. So off the page, they don't strike you as being all that flash, even though these guys might be the next big thing. And if you follow like your schoolboy rugby or, you know, age group rugby, maybe you'd be more excited to see them. But yeah, like, I mean, I looked through the like La 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 and Dylan Hunt going to the Blues. We knew about that ages ago. That was literally on the news here this morning, like scrolling along the bottom, Dylan Hunt and um, Nepo La 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 to join the Blues. It's like, yeah, that's old news, man. Uh, Bryn Gatlin to the Chiefs, Chase Tia Tia to the Chiefs, again we knew about that, uh, Julian Savia to the Hurricanes, the Crusaders didn't seem to really be bringing anyone in, because that's the way they do, they just breed talent down there, uh, but there's no Braden Enor, which is going to be disappointing, he's injured, and um, George Bridge is going to miss part of the start of the season as well, Manasa Mataele as well, so... Yeah, the Crusaders have got some injury worries. Um, Liam Squire, Kazuki Jimeno for the Highlanders. That's proper good news. They've got so many loose forwards. But there's not like a... I don't know, earth-shattering news from that one. Like, it lacks a little bit. Like, in America, you know, you get the, the draft day. You get trading for picks and all that kind of stuff. There's a bit of buzz about it, and it's exciting. This doesn't really have that. Like the Premier League has their, you know, transfer deadline days where teams pay millions of pounds for other players. This doesn't really have that. Rugby's not not like that. The money's not the same, so they don't buy players from each other. You know, that's where they come off contract and things like that. But, yeah, this didn't quite have the same buzz about it. So it's news, but it was nothing all that flash. Um, I wouldn't say it's boring, but speaking of boring, Stephen Jones... Um, what was he quoted as saying? That rugby's becoming a boringly predictable kick fest. And there's been a few other pundits going on about how rugby's getting boring. I feel like these guys probably need to pull their heads out, to be fair. Like, if you're being paid to cover rugby, uh, writing an article about rugby getting boring seems to be more about you yourself trying to attract attention to yourself rather than the actual game does rugby have more kicks in it probably we'd have to have a look at the stats to see how many kicks from hand in every game i had a brief look at some at some games um in kind of recent memory did i keep them on this booklet or the other one ah fortunately i've got them here um New Zealand, Argentina the other day had uh, Argentina 26 kicks, New Zealand 16. That was the um, the win for for the Pumas from memory. Uh, New Zealand against England in the, the World Cup semi-final, 32 kicks, England 24, New Zealand. 
Uh, we go back to England, South Africa, the World Cup final, 19 kicks England, 24 South Africa. 2011, Wales against France. That Warburton red card game, France 43, Wales 33 kicks. So kicking is like not a new thing, man. Like it goes back 2015 World Cup final, 25 kicks to, to 30. It's not... I don't think it's it's like a new thing. Maybe there's more box kicking than there used to be. Again, we'd have to look at the numbers. But I feel like... I know Squidge Rugby did a really good video on it. Like, why do the, the, the spring box kick so much? And everyone used to get frustrated with Faf de Klerk and all his box kicking. And Squidge Rugby did a breakdown of why they were doing it and when they were doing it. And once you see that pattern you really kind of get a better understanding of what they're actually doing. And I think that's maybe what we need more of instead of just, ooh, it's boring. I think it's not like it's aimless. There's definitely like a purpose for it. Either they're kicking and chasing hard to put the receiving team under pressure to hope they get a knock on. I hope they can pummel someone into touch, you know, or get a, a turnover at the breakdown. If they can push them backwards, they're trying to get up the field and get the ball back basically. And if you can't see that, then you probably need to get a different job as a pundit. I mean, sure, there are games which are, are not the best, but I don't mind a game full of kicking if the teams are effective at the kicks and they're not knocking the ball on and the scrum resets aren't taking all day. There's various factors that can lead a game to being not that easy on the eye. I can quite happily watch... What was that Wales victory over... Australia was it nine six I know some people didn't like that game but man the turnovers were phenomenal the knock-ons I believe were not that high uh you know David Pocock and Justin Tipperick were just battling it out and it was like skillful so it was defenses can canceling each other out which can be entertaining just because you say our oh, kicking is boring I don't think that's I don't think that's a smart thing to say personally like the Pumas the other day against the All Blacks, that game had a bit of defensive kicking. The Pumas defense was rock solid. The All Blacks were making mistakes. That was an entertaining game. Then 38-0 against the, the All Blacks the next week. Maybe the All Blacks error count was a bit lower. I don't know what the kick stats were, but in terms of pure entertainment value, especially if you're a neutral, I think the, the Pumas win would have been the one. The, the, the win built on defense, right? So... Yeah, man, defense can be attractive. Kicking can can do the business. If you, especially someone who's got a real tactical brain can analyze what's going on, and maybe commentators should talk about that more in the play, because sometimes you can't actually see, by the time the camera tracks across, you can't actually see exactly where everyone was standing, who was tracking across, where's the space. Sometimes you can see it before it happens, and sometimes you can't, just depending on which part of the field they're in. I know I'm rambling a bit about this one, but that that really pisses me off. Your job is to kind of promote the game and sell the game, not to just sell your own newspapers. Maybe it is selfishly. I don't know. Anyway, silly, silly stuff. Um, Sam Warburton actually did a piece on it in response to it, I guess. I think it was on Amazon Prime. I only saw it quoted where he said, if you are complaining about the kicking, then you probably haven't played international rugby. Because he basically said, you just can't truck it up like 20 phases and expect to, to win many games. So yeah i mean i watched during lockdown i watched a bunch of old games and in some ways the old games like the 80s late 80s early 90s were better like they were faster guys did not muck around like they do now they got into scrums very quickly but there were also loads of mistakes and and, and whatnot so it wasn't like it was a golden era then and it's a crap era now i don't i don't buy that for a second the games change man and the tactics will develop over time teams work out strategies look at joe schmidt like he had the perfect formula 2018 everything was going his way and teams kind of worked it out strategies uh you know putting balls behind his brush defense and whatnot getting physical with them not letting them dominate up front meant that the teams weren't really able to get over the line so yeah that's the beauty of sports right it goes through phases where different things dominate and then people work out a counter to it and people develop a new strategy and then there's a new counter and it's constantly evolving that's why we like the game so they can shove that one where the sun don't shine for all i 
care. Anyway, I'll stop rambling about that one. Last one is maybe a little bit of good news. Um, Scott Robertson, the, the champion coach of the Crusaders, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back titles for him. Uh, he's... It was one that came up last six months about him being maybe connected with um, the British and Irish Lions after missing out on the All Blacks gig to Ian, not Steve Foster. And apparently it's been reported that he's still in good conversations with the British and Irish Lions. Not so much to be like an assistant, but to, he said like, um, like contribute in some capacity and like be a good learning experience for him. And that would be maybe one good thing for him is to, to get a bit of experience outside the New Zealand setup to continue his own development as a coach like he needs to get any better because he's had a pretty winning formula so far. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's an interesting thought. I'd love to see him help out the British and Irish Lions in some capacity alongside Warren Gatland, develop his own coaching. I think that's win-win. Absolutely win-win. But yeah. You guys let me know your thoughts sorry man I've, I've rambled on a bit about the boring thing for quite some time it, it really kind of rolled me up because it's been it's been popping up in the in various sources a lot recently there seems to be a bit about trying to make the game rugby league and that scrums are somehow the enemy and whatnot when you consider how many beautiful set piece moves come from scrums i don't agree obviously the scrum resets suck when they go on and on and on often that seems to be how the refs handle it more than anything else but anyway also i did do a quick google search back from like 2010 and i found articles saying oh kicking in rugby is boring and um i think even earlier i found some articles saying you know rugby needs to do this rugby needs to do that because it's getting boring so what are you gonna say hate is gonna hate anyway uh you guys take care as i said again thank you for subscribing for watching for commenting all that jazz. Thanks to the Patreon people again for contributing. The people who recently um, did the buy me a beer thing. All much appreciated, man. And um, yeah, I've got my eyes on Optus stats. What can I say? Building towards that. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on this stuff. And uh, cheers again. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.